Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to be doing some coloring on acetate and making a shaker card out of it. I hope you'll stay tuned. So what I decided I wanted to do, first off, I took um, a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base, and then, well that's not it, and then I cut out uh, the front of it, here we go, I cut out the front of it so that um, I'd have this piece, and it's just a little bit smaller because I'm going to make um, a, a border around the outside edge of it. And then I cut out one of these Spellbinders Labels 23, and it's the, I think it's the third one from the center that I cut out. And that, no, the second one, I think it's the second largest one. And then I cut out a piece of acetate plastic that I got with a stamp set. You know, I don't, I don't like to buy acetate. I think it's better to just reuse the stuff you already get. And I put it in my Misty, the acetate, so it's um, basically centered in that corner. And the bird that I'm stamping, that's from an old Stampin' Up! set called A Happy Thing Stamp Set. I could be wrong, but um, when I look in my book, that's what it looks like, I, the name of it is. And um, that's where I got the bird. My sentiments um, are all bird related, and I don't, I didn't keep track of where I got these from. They're another oldie but goodie, and it just says a little birdie told me, and then it, that it's your birthday, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, we'll, we'll get to that later. So the first thing I want to do, I'm going to put my card off to the side. I'm going to stamp my birdie on the acetate, and I'm using Ranger Archival Ink. Archival Ink works best for this, and I can't find my smaller stamp ink pad, I mean, and so I'm using the Jumbo, the Mac Daddy of all ink pads. Yeah, I know, these things are crazy. I just, you know, can't help myself, and I'm just going to make sure that I ink that acetate as well as I can, and I'm going to go back in and ink it again. Hopefully it didn't move. If it did, I think in the time that I have this, um, that I'm inking this, I think I'll be able to clean that back off with a little bit of alcohol if I have to. Hopefully I won't have to, but if I do, I'm going to try and look at it first to make sure it's kind of... Let's just hope for the best. I'm trying to make sure that it's really well inked. Oh, I want to show you something I bought. I bought this at dickblick.com. It's called a Baron. Anyway, I bought this tool. It's got the bottom of it's just flat plastic, and I bought it specifically to use in the Misty on the Misty so that when I want to stamp something that's bigger, that I would be able to do so because normally... Woo. Normally when I stamp something in the Misty, I struggle with um, big big uh, stamps because of the way that I can press things. And I end up bruising my forearms because, I don't know, I press on it too hard, I guess. But anyway, I wanted to show you that because I think it's a really great idea. And I just, I'm going to use it to basically anytime I can't um, get leverage on something, that's what I'm going to use it on. I'm cleaning off my stamp <clears throat> before I go any further because archival ink, as you know, is a permitted ink, and um, I don't want to um, get my birdie seriously stained if I can avoid it. I'm going to let my birdie sit for a little bit, you know, because I want to make sure it looks good. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do, I guess I'll get the Misty back, and I'll stamp my sentiments, and I think I'm going to stamp them... Um, around on the frame. Should I color the frame? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I just don't know if I want to. I was going to do some spraying. I think I'll do that first. I'm going to spray some ink colors on this. Um, I made green alcohol ink and I will link that video on how I made these. They're very simple. But um, I'll, I'll 
I'll link that video. I'm going to do this over my trash can. You don't need to see me spray something, do you? And then I'm going to go around the inner, no, outer edge of my card base with a little black ink. And this is Gina Kay's, I'm going to let that just sit for a second back there. This is Gina Kay's Amalgam Ink. And I only need to do a, a little bit around the edge. I'm going to do just a fine line on my edge. You could do this with a black Sharpie. Oh, look, I have like a divot there. Um, you could do this with a Sharpie or, you know, basically any tool. Um, I wanted just to put like um, kind of a border around my card. And I'm just making sure that I don't go too far into the center of my card. I think that's probably good enough. I only got a little bit of smearing elsewhere. For me, that's pretty good. I could have done this much more cleanly, but pff, no one's going to see that, you think? Anyway. Okay, let's dry this real quick. I'm just going to use my heat tool and um, flatten it out a little bit. Now, I can lay it on my card back and we can see, see how that border is just exactly where I needed it. So that's good. That's all we want. Of course, I got a little weird spot there. Now I'm going to stamp my sentiment on it. And I have a sentiment for the inside and two for the outside. I have uh, the little birdie told me, I don't know, you know I can't remember things that in that, that far into the, it passed. My brain doesn't work that much. A little birdie told me, and then something about it being your birthday. I'm going to get that same Gina K amalgam ink. And we'll just stamp it up. Amalgam inks that Gina K makes are supposed to work with alcohol markers, with watercolors, basically everything is supposed to work with these. I um, played with them a couple days ago and I think it was, I was using a tag, you know, like a um, postage tag, you know those tags, that, I don't know, The ta it, just a tag, like Tim Holtz would use. Anyway, I was using the tag and it smeared so badly, I j it, everything I did just smeared and I don't know what, if it was, m and it's probably me, but um, clearly it doesn't work well with a tag. Use my little baron here. I'm not recommending that you get one of these barons and use it on your Misty because you might break your Misty lid and then you'll be hating me forever. I'm just telling you that's what I'm using because I struggle with um, stamping through the lid. And so I'm just showing you what I use, just giving you that as an idea, but not saying that you should buy it because if you broke your Misty, I would be heartbroken on your behalf. There you go. A little birdie told me it's your bird day. That's that piece. This is for a professor I had in college who, um, it, was, it, it was his idea that I tutor Rich and uh, we credit him for um, us getting married because, uh, you know, if he hadn't had me tutor Rich, I probably would have never met him, you know? Well, I would have met him because it was a small school, but I probably would not have known him like I did since I tutored him. Anyway, that's my story about how I got to meet Rich. This one looks good centered. I'll stamp it a few times. You know when I do sentiments, I like to stamp them uh, two or three times, sometimes four. It depends on, you know, how... Um, how well I do the first two or three times I stamp it. I like to make sure it's nice and dark. 
And I love the people that, that can stamp theirs and immediately it looks like it's been stamped four times when I do it. But I just don't have that skill set in mind. You know, it takes me several stamps. Two that time is all it took. But anyway, that's my story. Okay, I'm done with the Misty, I think, for now. There. And then the next thing we're going to do is... I'm going to put these stamps back while I'm thinking about it. Um, the next thing we want to do is... I'm going to put foam tape behind this. And um, my bird, of course, is going to go right in there but I need I'm gonna color that from the back I'm gonna use my alcohol markers and the way let me grab the inks I want to use or the markers and I'll be back okay the colors I'm gonna be using are in the like golds and brown family I'm gonna use these are my touch five alcohol markers so I'll just give you the numbers real quick I'm using 35 36 3, 31, 41, 101, 104, 99, maybe, it's a dark brown, and then uh, a Sharpie that's in black, because um, I don't think that regular markers, re regular alcohol markers, give me as black of a black as um, a Sharpie does. And you sometimes have to color darker than you normally would have, I'm sure. I'm going to have to go a little darker, I think, because um, when you're trying to color through, there we go, and uh, through acetate, you have to put more color into it often, and that was the 41 that I used there. I'm going to just do his forehead with this red that's number three, just in this little spot, right? There, it's pretty pink. But maybe, maybe once it dries, it won't be as pink. If it is, we'll just add another color to it, right? Okay, then we're gonna go into below his chest. I'm gonna make it this color, which is dark yellow. And that's clearly not dark enough. I have to go darker. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to use this brown color. Hopefully it's darker. This is 101. And I'm hoping... him. He's going to look cute. I'm pretty happy with him. And I'm going to use tear tape to hold him down because I want to make sure it's right up against the edge. I'm going to put my bird right up against the edge. And then I'll put another row of adhesive on the other piece. So look, I just have just enough. Okay, how's that going to do? How are we doing so far with our birdie? That's pretty good. And then I'm going to put a flower or flowers out here so that our bird has something to look at. Now, this is when we put in our foam because we're going to want to have um, foam going all around this. i got to clean my 
scissors because they're getting really, oh, they're getting really sticky. Yeah, remember I talked about that uh, foam tape that I hated that I had a long time ago? This one is very similar. It's super sticky and um, it's going to be a nightmare. I can just tell you that right now. It's going to be a nightmare. Then I'm going to make a second um, layer. When you do a uh, shaker card, well, this is pretty thick. I might, I think I might just go with this. Uh, when you make a shaker card, you really want to have a thicker tape in there. You don't want it to be um, kind of a um, thin. I'll show you the difference in a second here. Um, you don't want to have a thin tape that's going to not give you enough room for your shaker things to shake. Okay. Can you see how thick that is? Okay. This is foam squares that you normally get. See the thickness difference? You want this to be thick enough so that your shaker things can move around and that you don't have a problem with them um, getting, getting stuck. And if you go with the really thin things, you will get them stuck. The point of this is making sure that you're not having the shaker thing stuck to the side. I think we're doing pretty good. I'm going to have to put our shaker ingredients in here. I hope it's still sticky. I think it is. And we're going to pick out our shaker things. Last steps. We're going to make flowers to put on our card. I use this punch. It's an old Martha Stewart. It's like a um, frond of some kind. It looks like I'll put it down on here so you can see it looks like that. Then I'm using another one that's an old Martha Stewart that looks like this. Oh, hold on. It's upside down. I chopped the side of that one off. And then I'm using this one. I think it's from Stampin' Up! And it comes out to be like that flower. So we have this one. Okay, so you've seen them all. I have a bunch of flower stamens. That would be the center of flowers. And I kind of like this one. It's kind of a fuzzy, fuzzy looking thing. And so I'm going to snip those apart. And I bought all, almost all my stamen I bought from AliExpress because they were very, very, very inexpensive there. I think they were like, you know, under a dollar for a hundred. So they're a lot. I'm going to get that out of the way so that we don't end up with them all over my lap, as you know I will. Then, next step, we're going, since I've already punched out a bunch of flowers and leaves, I'm going to use this. This is a tool that you get for cake decorating or clay, and it's a, I think it's called a stylus, but anyway, I have a piece of foam, fun foam, and I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to rub the center of them. And then this one, oh, that was one of the ones I was playing with. I'm going to throw that one out. I have hundreds of them, so I punch way more than I need. Then I'm going to do the underneath. Let's see if I can do the bigger stylus and see if that works for these. Yeah, that's going to work better. I'm going to do some of them. I do the centers. And then some of them, I'm going to do the ends to make them go under. So I can put some, you know, I can kind of do that to make them really 3D if I want to. Or I can just turn them like that. Anyway, that's, that's the plan. So I'm going to do that on all of these. I'm not going to do a bunch because I don't really think I need a ton, but I want to have enough that they look good. Next step is we're going to poke a hole in the center like that. And you have to make sure that your hole is going to be big enough to get your stamen to go through it. So you might have to poke either a couple holes or pull it through like that. So you have, see that, that's how big a hole 
because when you do these, here's how I do them. Um, you're going to want to bend them in half. Sometimes you just have to push one through at a time. All right, let me just uh, thread a few more of these. You get the gist, and I'll be back in a, as soon as I thread about, I don't know, a hundred of them. Five, maybe. <laughs> I have a bunch of the greenery, and what I thought I would do is lay down the green pieces where I want them first, and then I can put the um, flowers on after I lay all these green pieces in where I want them. So here's my flowers. I thought I would do is put it like that and then put one of these like that. What do you think? I'm going with it. Uh, does it look too Christmassy? I'm worried it does. I don't want I don't really want it to have that, you know, kind of Christmassy look. Maybe if I make this glittery. I have my, um, this is um, liquid. It's, it's kind of like having a wink of Stella, only you brush it on. It's Liquitex Professional Iridescent Medium. And all I did was I put it with a little bit of water and that's all you do. And then you can just brush it on. So that's my plan. I'm just going to brush it on one of these red ones and see what I think and then we'll know if it's something we want to go with or not. I don't know, can you see the glitter in that? On this one. What I did to keep my stamen where I wanted them is I um, I push them through and then I put hot glue on the back so that they will stay and never move ever in their whole lives ever. And I'm going to put a little drop of glue right there and another little drop of glue under that. This is that hot glue that I hate. Oh, I hate this hot glue. It's just miserable. It makes me so grumpy. I'm just telling you. It's making me grumpy. And then I'm going to put a little dollop right there and put my flower in it. Okay. Then I'm going to put a little drop there, a little drop here, and a little drop there. And I'll put my leaves. Oh, whatever. Come off there. Put one leaf there. And one leaf over here. And then this piece and just shove. Oops of that right there and then I like the iridescent flower I'm happy I did that so I'm gonna paint the rest of them so that they're all iridescent and then I'm gonna I have a little spot there that didn't get iridescent medium on that or maybe I'll put another one I think I'll put another one down at the bottom I like to have uneven numbers so we're going with that going with an uneven number of flowers there we go and that way it's not going to cover up um, the shaker part of it either so a little birdie told me it's your birthday and then an inside knowing you is such a tweet. I thought that was really fun. And then I'm going to put my stamp on the back. And we're all set. 
So there's our card. I hope you enjoyed this, that it's something, a little bit of a different take on a shaker card, that you give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.